let us now holistically understand the framework of lean manufacturing. There are five aspects here. Stability, Standardization, Just-in-Time, Jidoka, Involvement of All. The goal of TPS, Toyota Production System, is to create products or services which are of high quality with low cost and with short lead times. The base of lean manufacturing is 5S, which provides stability. It uses standardized techniques like standardized work, that is, standard operating procedures, SOPs, and Hejunka. The processes are continuously improved through Kaizen techniques. We will learn this in detail in due course. The pillars of TPS are JIT and Jidoka. In JIT, that is, just in time, the processes are so developed that the operation is done with minimum resources required to deliver just what is needed in just the required amount, just where it is needed and just when it is needed. In Jidoka, the process of production is designed such that there is one by one confirmation to detect abnormalities. Stop and respond to every abnormality. Separate machine work from human work. Mistake proofing. All these need to be done through the involvement of people with good processes and with the optimal technology used. So, there should be a process with minimum inputs and have maximum outputs. This should involve everyone in the company. There should be respect for people. The lead time for the entire process should be minimum. The resultant of all these is high quality. TPS Toyota Production System This philosophy of Toyota embodies a manufacturing culture of continuous improvement based on setting standards aimed at eliminating waste through participation of all employees. The goal of the system is to reduce the timeline from the time an order is received until the time it is delivered to the actual customer. Ideally, the system strives to produce the highest possible quality at the lowest possible cost with the shortest lead time possible. The TPS is based on two main pillars. They are the JIT, that is, just in time, and Jidoka. JIT focuses on manufacturing and supplying only the output, what is needed, when it is needed, and in the amount it is needed. This system reduces inventory and strives to prevent both early and overproduction. Jidoka means the ability to stop production lines in the event of problems such as equipment malfunction, quality issues, or late work. It helps prevent the passing of defects, helps identify and correct problem areas during localization, and isolation. We will again take this up in the improved phase of the course. Jidoka. Let us now discuss this in more detail. This is also called as in-station process control, that is ISPC. The objectives are to build in quality by preventing the mass production of defective products. Prevent injury to employees or damage to tools, equipments, and machinery when an abnormal condition occurs. And separate human work from machine work. To achieve these objectives, ISPC relies upon an organizational structure that will promote and support the systems and tools that must work in tandem to ensure that Prompt action is taken when abnormal conditions occur. 
ensuring quality products through Jidoka. Using conventional methods, finished parts and products are inspected by an inspector before delivery to customers. However, defect free parts cannot be assured if finished goods are sampled by inspectors. Excuses will not mean much to a customer who gets the one bad unit from among 1000 good ones. Generally, defective products are discovered by an inspector and repaired before they make it to the customer. When quality defects are detected in the process, we must determine the root cause, not the symptom, and implement countermeasures to eliminate the defect. The stronger the determination not to let defective products out of the plant, the more stringent inspections become and the more often corrective adjustments and repairs are made. Inspection carried out by offline inspectors yields no added value. So efforts are necessary to find ways to manufacture quality products with fewer inspectors. In other words, we must build quality into the product. Introducing a device into the process that can determine if a wiring harness is mistakenly wired and alert the operator is an example of building quality into the product. Building in quality through Jidoka There should be a commitment to build the quality into the process. This principle gives team members the responsibility to check quality thoroughly at every stage of their work so that defects are not passed downstream. Each team member must be aware that the downstream process is a customer and must never pass on a defective product. If equipment is defective or operates abnormally, either the machine itself or some system must detect the problem and stop operation. Mistake proofing or Pokayoki devices are used as simple means for this purpose. This also makes it easier to maintain quality. Remember that in Toyota production system, you will need to take measures and see that if a defect in quality occurs, then root causes are uncovered to apply countermeasures to prevent its recurrence. Building quality at each process through Jidoka. Building in quality at each process brings the inspector's function into each process so that the defects can be uncovered immediately. Only in this way can we ensure that all parts are defect free at every step of the process. If defects are discovered at the downstream process, it does no good to merely correct them because if the root cause is not investigated and eliminated, the defect will continue to occur. Therefore, in such cases, the previous process must be promptly notified of the problem. Then the process or department where the defect originated must immediately investigate the cause and institute measures to prevent recurrences. This brings us to the conclusion that it is important for team members to inspect the quality of each part they produce. One way to ensure this is strict observance of the standardized work established under the prevailing working conditions at each process. Standardized work is devised so that required quality levels can be achieved and maintained. Standardized work weaves visual inspection and inspection using measuring instruments into the production work performed in each process. If inspection is not interwoven into the process, the concept of building in quality at each process will not function properly. We will study about the standardized work concept in more detail in the course soon. 
inspection work. This is not merely the action of judging whether parts or finished products are good or bad. It entails the following. Pursuing the cause of defects. Gaining a comprehensive understanding of the circumstances to pinpoint the real cause. And instituting measures to effectively prevent their recurrence. Emphasis on pursuit of real causes is necessary because cursory observations of a defect phenomenon can lead to trying to cure symptoms instead of the disease. For example, a defect resulting from installation of a wrong part might be discovered, but installation of a wrong part may be only a symptom of a more deeply rooted problem rather than the real cause. Careful investigation might reveal that the wrong part was installed because a sketch in the operation instruction sheets is difficult to read or the instruction sheet itself is prone to misinterpretation or that parts are not arranged in the order of the installation sequence or even that a team member is just inattentive. Defects are reduced by effectively grasping all these factors, then introducing countermeasures based on comprehensive understanding. Thus, the purpose of inspection work is not to pick out the defective product, but to eradicate the occurrence of defects. In a nutshell, inspection work goes beyond mere diagnosis to encompass full treatment and rehabilitation. It is essential that inspection work be understood in this way. Added Value of Repair Reduction Even when everyone in each process is observing standardized work, a few products that require repairs are bound to turn up. Although ideally the need for repair work should not occur, it does. It seems to be generally accepted that when repair work is required, it will be enough just to make the repairs on a repair line and let everyone else get on with their normal work. It is important to recognize that repair work requires increased manpower, lower rates of added value and raises production costs. Activities such as these should be identified and targeted for elimination. The prevention of defects and the necessity for repairs can be achieved by aggressively promoting continuous improvement in conjunction with quality. By producing high quality products and eliminating the need for repairs, not only can labor hours for repairs be reduced, but so can the labor hours required for inspection work. Prevention of injuries and damage In machine intensive production areas, we rely on sensors within the machines and or equipment to detect when an abnormal condition has occurred, stop production and signal that a problem has occurred in a specific area. In labor-intensive production areas such as assembly that do not have machinery or equipment with detection systems, we rely on the knowledge and skills of team members to build quality into the process and to stop production when an abnormality occurs. By stopping the production as soon as a problem occurs, we can protect employees, prevent damage to equipment and tools that might otherwise cause significant downtime for repairs and avoid producing parts that may not meet our quality standards. The first thing to do when production is stopped is to get it operating again, as long as there is no threat to team member safety or part quality. The team leader or support personnel who respond to the signal 
will work to help resolve the problem and restart production. When production stops, it is important to identify the problem, find the root cause and implement countermeasures to ensure that the problem does not recur. Human work and machine work Human work This refers to work that cannot be completed without team member involvement. Examples of human work are picking up or packing parts, unloading or loading parts into a machine, initiating the machine cycle by depressing palm buttons and generally performing manual operations. Machine work It refers to the portion of work that equipment performs automatically without operator involvement. Examples of machine work are automatic inspection of parts, automatic conveyance or automatic molding once the operator has initiated the cycle. By having smart machines and equipment that can detect, signal and identify abnormalities, we no longer have to assign a team member to watch the process 100% of the time. Instead, a team member can cover multiple machines or perform other tasks while operating a machine. This separation of human work from machine work permits the flexibility that we need in order to respond to the changes in customer demand. The Just-in-Time Pillar The Just-in-Time philosophy advocates producing and or delivering only the necessary parts within the necessary time in the necessary quantity using the minimum necessary resources. Ideally, the appropriate number of parts are produced and immediately shipped when the customer order is received. Upstream processes and suppliers deliver exactly the appropriate quantity of components when the downstream process needs them. In this situation, there is no need for inventory. Eliminating all inventory and work in process is impossible in the practical sense. The key to manufacturing efficiency is continuously decreasing the quantity of each in the system. There is a general tendency to react to problems by accumulating a reserve of stock based on an estimate of quality defects, equipment breakdown and team member absenteeism. In JIT, there is no using stock buildup to counter these problems. Keeping excess stock means the various production problems are hidden or glossed over. This makes it impossible to establish a work site with a strong constitution. Stock used to compensate for production halts due to defects or machine and equipment breakdowns hides the fact that these are problems. This hides the need to forestall problems, prevent their recurrence or improve the operational rate when defects or breakdowns occur. JIT manufacturing helps identify opportunities for perfecting processes rather than creating space for inventories. A key element of the just-in-time philosophy is the pull system. Pull system in JIT In conventional production systems, Parts produced by one process, as defined by the production schedule, are delivered to following processes even if they are not yet needed there. This method may be good when parts can be produced on schedule throughout the whole process. But if just one process has trouble and the line stops, the processes directly related to the troubled one will suffer from either a shortage or a backup of parts. This is called a push system. 
the pull system eliminates under or over production by limiting production to those parts demanded by the next downstream process. Pull system is the cornerstone of JIT. The whole concept is based on customer demand. This demand is known as pull that runs in backward direction. In other words, production activities begin as a result of the pull generated by the customers in the form of order confirmation by them. There should be a proper connection of assembly processes with upstream batch processes such as, for example, stamping, injection molding, paint or a machining operation. Such things are done through the use of pull system and JIT processes. The pull system eliminates under or over production by limiting production to those parts demanded by the next downstream process. A typical vending machine is a good example of a pull system in action. The customer pulls the items needed, in the quantity needed, at the time needed. The supplier replaces or fills up only those items pulled by the customer. For a preceding process to produce the requisite quantity of parts, all production processes must have people, equipment and materials that can manufacture the parts just in time. If the downstream process demand is irregular in quantity and time, the upstream process must proportionately increase or decrease output to compensate for the irregularity. Let's understand this concept of pull system using the analogy of McDonald's burger. When you visit McDonald's, you do not find meal, that is, the product ready for you. You order your meal and production starts in a just-in-time manner. Why this happens? The answer is simple. McDonald's cannot afford to produce burger without knowing the various combinations in the demand of its customers. The production of burger begins in the reverse direction. You as a customer pull or trigger this burger production chain. Same holds true in case of auto manufacturing. The customer demands can vary given the intense competition in the auto market. An auto manufacturing company cannot afford to produce vehicles without incorporating customers demand as quickly and efficiently as possible. We will continue this learning through the next screen. Please proceed. When customer demand is established in the form of confirmed order, the organization begins production by sending signals in the backward direction. All the preceding processes send signals to the following processes. These signals come in the form of a card called Kanban. Kanban is a Japanese word meaning signboard. Kanban is a reverse production order signal that guides every preceding process to produce what is needed in necessary quantity and at necessary time for the next process. A sample Kanban board. Look at the schematic on the screen for some time. It is a sample Kanban board. It consists of a simple whiteboard and sticky notes or cards. Each card on the board represents a task. In a classic Kanban board model, there are three columns as shown in the schematic. To do. This column lists the tasks 
that are not yet started. These are the backlog tasks. Doing consists of the tasks that are in progress. Done consists of the tasks that are completed. This simple visualization alone leads to a great deal of transparency about the distribution of the work as well as existing bottlenecks if any. Of course, Kanban boards can show elaborate workflows depending on the complexity of the workflow and the need to visualize and examine specific parts of the workflow to identify bottlenecks in order to remove them. Flow in Kanban Have a look at the schematic on the screen. There is a flow of cards from the backlog to the to-do to the ongoing and then to the done phases of the activity. At the core of Kanban is the concept of flow. This means that the cards should flow through the system as, as evenly as possible without long waiting times or blockages. Everything that hinders the flow should be critically examined. Kanban has different techniques, metrics and models. And if these are consistently applied, it can lead to a culture of continuous improvement, that is Kaizen. The concept of flow is critical and by measuring flow metrics and working to improve them, you can dramatically improve the speed of your delivery processes while reducing cycle time and improving the quality of your products and services by getting faster feedbacks from your customers, internal or external. So, Kanban is a visual system for managing work as it moves through a process. Kanban visualizes both the process that is the workflow and the actual work passing through that process. The goal of Kanban is to identify potential bottlenecks in your process and fix them so that work can flow through it cost effectively and at optimal speed or throughput. It all started in the early 1940s. The first Kanban system was developed by Taishi Ono in Toyota Automotive in Japan. It was created as a simple planning system, the aim of which was to control and manage work and inventory at every stage of production optimally. This system thus ideally controls the entire value chain from the supplier to the end consumer. In this way, it helps avoid supply disruption and overstocking of goods at various stages of the manufacturing process. Kanban requires continuous monitoring of the process. Particular attention needs to be given to avoid bottlenecks that could slow down the production process. The aim is to achieve higher throughput with lower delivery lead times. Take the case of manufacturing. Here, Kanban is a visual sign or signal that conveys a set of instructions to either withdraw parts or produce a given product. It is recognized as a card that passes between processes communicating information as to what materials to replenish. There are two categories of Kanban. Withdrawal Kanban. This acts as a license to take from a stores or central market area. Instruction or Signal Kanban. This acts as a license to make a product such as telling a molding machine to run a set number of product say B. Look at the schematic on the screen. You will see the flow of activities right from the customer to the assembly in the plant, to the paint section, to the molding section. In between, there is a supermarket of suppliers. 
All curved arrows represent the direction of information flow through Kanban. Straight arrows represent the flow of materials or product. The pull system using appropriate Kanban allows material to flow through manufacturing. Now look at the schematic on the screen again. You can follow the flow of material and information through each process. To use the Kanban process, your production department should satisfy at least the following requirements. The consumption of the Kanban materials should be relatively constant within a period that is longer than the replenishment lead time. The supply source should be capable of producing a large number of small lots within a short period. This Kanban works not only within different production departments of the assembly plant but also between its vendor supplying parts to it. Just have a look at the right schematic showing the process. Remember that most important advantage of using a Kanban is to enable the production process to control itself through reduction of manual posting as far as possible. This will thus reduce the lead time in stocking materials. Core Practices of Kanban Method There are some 6 excellent practices used in Kanban workflow. They are Visualize the workflow Limit the work in progress WIP Manage the flow Make the process policies explicit. Implement the feedback loops. Improve collaboratively. Evolve experimentally using the scientific method. Application of Kanban in Industries While medium and large product and service organizations, especially high-tech manufacturing companies, have been implementing Lean Six Sigma initiatives for several years, Kanban enables all types of companies and business functions such as HR, marketing, sales, procurement and so forth. Kanban is also being applied in traditional project management contexts such as construction and engineering projects. A wide variety of organizations, staffing companies, recruitment organizations, advertising agencies, insurance companies and many others are looking to Kanban for streamlining their operations, eliminating waste and dramatically improving throughput and quality. Just have a look at the right side schematic. A Kanban board used by HR managers in their recruitment related function. This is the beauty of Kanban boards, isn't it? Let us now understand the concept of level production. This is also known as production leveling or production smoothing or by its Japanese original term Hejunka. Level production is the averaging of model mix and volume of production over a given time. The final process assembly line must produce all the different models in a continuous sequence and limit the fluctuations in scheduled production requirements. 
By leveling the volume and mix at the final process, we also level the output requirements of any upstream processes. The ability to take advantage of the smaller incremental production requirements results in more frequent changeovers, smaller batches and smaller WIP work in process inventories. Let us take an example to understand this concept. Have a look at the schematic graph on the screen. You will see that a downstream demand for 100 units per day can be produced in a lot size of 1000 numbers once every 10 days or it can be produced just in time in the lot size of 100 units every day. The lot size of 1000 creates an average inventory of 500 while the daily lot of 100 units creates an average inventory of 50. Thus, the direct benefits of the smaller lot size are Reduction of investment in materials and inventory Reduction in warehouse space required in storing the extra materials Reduction of potential production of large quantities of defective parts Improvement in response to manufacturing problems Dark time Tark is a German word meaning meter. The leveling of the production quantity means that one product should be manufactured in a given number of minutes and seconds. This time is called the Tark time. This is based on the average quantity required by the customer. It is the time to finish given amount of work doing a single operation, making one component or assembling the entire product. Tark time is calculated using the following information. Time available for manufacturing for the same period of time. Customer requirements for a period of time. For example, an assembly area must make 2500 units of product A and 17,500 units of product B in a month. The area work is scheduled for two 8-hour shifts and has a morning break of 10 minutes, lunch break of 20 minutes and afternoon break of 10 minutes. The first step in calculating talk time is to establish customer requirements for a single shift. The customer requires a total of 20,000 units for a month. If there are 20 workdays in the month, the customer requirement per shift is 20,000 units divided by 20 days divided by 2 shifts, which is equal to 500 units per shift. The second step is to determine the time, usually in seconds per shift available for manufacturing products. The shift is scheduled for 8 hours or 480 minutes. We will subtract 20 minutes for breaks and 20 minutes for lunch. The time available is 480 minutes minus 20 minutes for breaks minus 20 minutes for lunch, which is equal to 440 minutes or 26,400 seconds. Once customer requirements and time available have been figured out for one shift, then we calculate talk time. So, talk time equals time available divided by the customer requirements, which means in this case 26,400 seconds per shift divided by 500 units per shift, which equals 52.8 seconds. Using the talk time to determine production quantities makes it easy to organize the equipment, labor hours and other factors necessary for effective production. Remember, if only one type of item is manufactured, level production is possible by leveling only the quantity. But if multiple types are manufactured, however, the leveling of the types is necessary to avoid the waste that leads to lower efficiency.